more, much more tight, tighter restrictions on what you were allowed to do. And the, the effect of that was to push illegal activities or immoral activities out into the kind of spaces that were less controlled or policed. Now, the, the uh, street commissioners had a problem anyway because of the the Birmingham police force was so threadbare and small. There were, in theory, two police constables in Birmingham for a population of 50,000 people. Um, but they had, uh, they had street keepers and night watch that they employed during the winter months and then laid off in the summer. And uh, so they, they, it was their job to sort of chase around looking for big pockets and that kind of thing. But they tended to stick, one, they tended to stick to the very urban areas, the very city centre, and two, because the roads were so lousy, it tended to only attract elderly men who couldn't get a job in a factory. So the chances of you being caught by a street keeper if you just nick the lead of somewhere, I think you could run with the lead quicker than the street keeper would be able to catch you. Um, but it did have this effect of pushing, pushing people out when they um, when they wanted to do anything that was. Uh, society didn't think they should have been. So, in this area, and certainly towards uh, Garrison Lane, there was a lot of unclaimed land around there, right up to the middle of the 19th century. Um, but also Borton's Hole, uh, which is a, a notorious spot, a, a pink in the river ray, there's a, there's a, a turn in it where it was, where it was particularly deep, and again un, unkempt. But even, even down per parts of Pershaw Road were unclaimed or un unused as, as well. And that's where on a Sunday, the one free day in the week, because it's a six day week for most, most workers, so Sunday's the only free day, but unfortunately it's the day where you're under more restrictions because the pubs weren't supposed to open on during church services. And since they lasted two hours, and there were three of them in the day. <laughs> there wasn't much time to open pubs anyway, or certainly beer houses. Um, but it was out there that the gangs and the, the young lads and the men went to do all those things like cockfighting, bull baiting, slogging, um, mass brawls, even just pigeon uh, flying if it was on a Sunday was illegal. And, uh, and they could get away with it, apart from the way they were condemned in the press, um, because usually the there wasn't a police presence anyway and nobody was quite sure whose jurisdiction it was under at the best of times. So bull baiting tended to be on, um, uh, on, on land that was near a boundary. So Hansworth had quite a lot of bull baiting um, uh, because the Birmingham police wouldn't go into Staffordshire to visit it. Um, and, uh, and even after the introduction of the uh, uh, Cruelty to Animals Act and so on, these, these things went on because you, it was for gambling. It wasn't just that you liked seeing cockles kill each other, it was that you could put money on them. And so it's those kind of activities that were being eventually chased and certainly pushed out of, out of town. And they were gang organised. Eventually, the whole gambling on animals and also on uh, street games begins to be organised by the by the gangs. And so by the 20th century gangs, and I'll talk about them now. Last stop, and I think we've only got two more. <laughs> um, I'll Sorry, talk about yeah. the, the 20th century uh, bookmaking gangs. Um, but, oh. <laughs> okay, that's enough for there. <laughs>